Hello, my name is uh, Ryan Strong, and this will be my Milestone 7 new video, I guess I'm calling it. Uh, I'm basically retaking this uh, this last class, the one that I just took, because um, there are a few things that my instructors wanted that I wasn't able to complete in time or properly, so um, <coughs> retaking it to one, give me more time to better polish it off and to kind of work towards uh, doing quite a bit better. So I'll go over uh, some of those things. So uh, to start, we'll talk about my task list. So the uh, first tasks for Milestone 7 were uh, bike crash respawn, player respawn, and sharp turns. So uh, discussing those, um, for the bike crash respawn, basically, uh, like the description says, bike will respawn at respawn location when the bike crashes into an object, as opposed to it just automatically setting you back on top of the bike wherever you crashed. Um, the reason for this is because there were times when the bike would get turned around due to the crash because that's the way the bike landed which would face the player the going the wrong direction and that wasn't really an ideal play style so it's been a, uh, adjusted as such and I'll go over that when I get into the scripts and the actual unity next thing uh, player respawn um, player respawn was working before uh, but the issues that it had was um, the player was not facing the intended direction. Uh, instead it would just have the player face whatever random direction they were facing when they uh, hit the death zone. So that's something that I fixed and I will show as well. And then the sharp turns. Uh, sharp turns, this is uh, primarily meant for when you're going, uh, you're going up to a sharp turn, say you're going a little bit fast, uh, allowing you to hit a button on the game and hold it while uh, starting that turn to help you make that turn a little bit quicker maybe a little bit easier so for next week milestone eight um, I need I have in here create the uh, complete the credit scene um, basically what I need to do for that is the speeds just a little bit too slow for that it's kinda uh, takes a while for the credits to go up so I just need to speed that up a bit so that I can uh, it, it more beneficial to the player so they don't have to just sit there and watch really slow credits go by. Uh, main menu. I want to make the main menu more appealing. Right now it's really bland and uh, we've all seen before the the main menu and how it looked so I just want to make it more appealing. Timed events. So I call it timed events but it's not really timed events. It's more trigger events. Um, what it's there for is to say that um, my game uh, the whole purpose behind coal mine escape is, you know, this area is kind of blowing up and going up in a crap storm. So um, there should be more of that in the game. Currently, you don't really see that because um, the main points were trying to get all the other stuff to work before. So it felt like instead you were just, well, let me go ahead and kind of race through the map and um, see if I can complete it without crashing a bunch or see if I can complete it with a quicker time. So to fix that I added, uh, it's called timed but it's technically triggered events. Uh, you know explosions and sounds that will accompany it make the player feel like the, um, the area is more dangerous than it actually is. Um, camera pan. Uh, I call this camera pan because basically what it's set up for is it's more of a camera flyby. Uh, it would be just a, a quick flyby of the camera around the scene depicting you know the area before stuff started to happen and then all of a sudden while it's panning by certain events start to happen that the that the player sees before they actually get on the bike um, just to give them a little bit more realistic feel as well and then uh, the escape route here that was um, due to the fact that the the very end of the track it looks like you're just going into a dark cave it doesn't really give you any other information so some players could be like well do I really want to go in there I don't know so to do that uh, to fix that I added a, uh, a sign towards the end that maybe that will give the players a little bit more information and help them understand 
Uh, for game nine, for uh, milestone nine, uh, I have a game icon in here. The game icon that's in there works, but it needs some work. So I'm gonna work on that a bit more. And then I also have camera pan in here again, just because I set it as a B priority back here because I didn't know if I would be able to get to it or not, or if I would be able to finish it. So it's a A priority. It must be done by the end of this milestone. So let's get into Unity. So we'll start off in the main scene here, the, the start menu. Again, like I said, this is pretty bland, so I'll have to adjust that more later. Um, we'll go into the actual main scene here and take a look at the... Uh, stuff that I worked on. So I did manage to work on a few things uh, for next week ahead of time just because I had a little extra time and there were some things that I was having trouble figuring out or getting to work properly. Um, I'll go over those in a moment. But uh, to start, what we'll talk about is the checkpoints and the respawning and the death zone and all that. So uh, going to death zones here. <coughs> we'll open up our death zone script and we'll give that a minute to open up. Um, shouldn't take too long to open because well I hope it doesn't take too long to open. <laughs> Here we go, it's loading up now. So, um, so yeah, uh, did a lot of work on a bunch of different things this week that I am pretty proud of. I uh, have quite a bit more work to do still, but I mean it's a start. So moving forward, all right. So what I did here was um, initially I had a separate thing here for on trigger enter. Now I have uh, on trigger enter, but the only thing that's called is timer equaling the respawn time and the play dead equaling to true if the player enters it. How that works is what it is saying is if the player enters this trigger then timer is going to equal respawn time and if you go up to the top here respawn time is equal to five now that is uh, something that's very important that we will get to in just a moment but I wanted to also say that again play dead would then equal true play dead is initially declared up here public bull play dead equaling to false and it's not really touched anywhere uh, else except for specific areas for specific events. So back to the respawn time. So what I have here is in my update, which uh, if you don't know how update works, uh, update is this function update is called every single frame in the game. So it's basically one frame per second. We could call it, right? Um, that's not going to be completely accurate uh, one frame per second because that's just not how it goes but um, I'm gives, using that as an example because uh, if you think of it as uh, frames per second in in games the higher frames per second you have then the more times that that's going to get called so if you have like 60 frames per second that single function there of update is being called 60 times in that one second so anyway uh, in here I say if my timer is not equal to zero therefore respawn time like we said down below timer equals respawn time so it does not it equals five then we're gonna call this function we're gonna say timer equals mathf dot move towards now what move towards is is it's saying that your timer which you have here this is the time that you need to get to and what it's saying here is this this timer here is whatever the time is actually at when it's uh, when it's actually being called or being used. So the majority of the time it's at zero. So it doesn't have to do anything because it's already at zero. And zero and zero, you don't you can't do anything else with it. Zero does equal zero. So so it's basically saying that five you want to be at zero. So we're going to do time dot delta time to get to zero. So basically, you're going to wait five seconds. So it's going to go five, four, three, two, one, zero. Now you're at zero. So the whole point behind that is it's a way for me to 
make it so that the bike doesn't like automatically oh I just hit this death zone or oh I just hit this object boom I all, I'm perfectly at the respawn point right away that's not well, sorry about that that's not something that we we want so we give it that timer and we make it so that it actually uh, takes time to get there gives the player a second to be like oh wow I just crashed rather than saying oh I just crashed wait did I ju what just happened so lets them see a little bit more and then what we do is we go into this first if statement and it says if GM now GM stands for game manager so it's my game manager it's called up here it's a private variable and it's referencing my game manager script which is up here I'm trying to point with my finger like you can see <laughs> I'm not sure if you can see my mouse either so I hope you can because I don't know how to add maybe draw mode I want to make it to where you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Um, this would be more beneficial if I'd done it before. Let me pause. All right. Uh, so I found a way that I can actually make it to where you guys can understand what I'm talking about. So let's uh, kind of say a few things again. So I'm referencing this here. It says GM. All right, GM is in reference to this here, which is game manager, which then references the game manager here, right? So utilizing that, what we can do is then say, okay, dot check one. Now, what check one is, if we go to get rid of my draw and minimize that, let me all right welcome back that was a short break for me intermission it was probably nothing for you guys but you should actually see my mouse now uh, I hope you do because now I can also click and it'll actually point out things that I kinda click on so again we talked about the respawn time and so on and so forth so anyway uh, GM so game manager dot check one you go to the game manager you got check one here right equals false it always starts out at false check one through check ten always equal false until they're modified at a later point so we go back to the death zone script and it says if check one equals true and check two equals false and play dead equals true now remember again down below this play dead here equals true because you just collided with it and timer equals zero then you're going to change the speed to zero, the excel to zero, the excel forward to zero, the break will equal true, and the current torque will equal zero. BC stands for bike control, as you can see up here. And in bike control, that's a, these are all values that are up way up above. I think I need to go a little higher. Maybe not. <laughs> Let me just do it this way. Excel. There we go. Let's go to the first time. So here we go. Public float Excel. All right. So uh, and then you got the the rest of them in here as well. Current torque. Uh, break. So it's going to set all of those values and then what it's going to do is it's going to take the player it's going to transform their position meaning it's going to move them from where they currently are at wherever they wrecked or wherever they hit that death zone at and it's going to say that player their get component uh, player get component player for checkpoints which is a, another script and it's actually up here Oh, of course. Let me pause again real quick because I'm having issues. I'll be right back. All right, and we're back. So it's going to say that this player four checkpoints script uh, dot check pause. All right, and that is a reference to this public vector three. 
So basically it's saying whatever was saved in my actual checkpoint script whenever you go across the specific checkpoint is um, going to be saved. So for example for checkpoint one I can just do it up here. For checkpoint one it's going to if the player goes through it they um, and if checkpoint one is false then it's going to make checkpoint one true and it's going to set the position of the vector three to these exact coordinates. All right, so that saves it in this script. Then what this is doing is, like I said, it's replacing the position of the player back to that position that they were at for that checkpoint, right? Then this next line of code here, it says player.transform.rotation. So that's saying that not only is it going to move the actual physical location, but it's also going to face it in a specific direction. So what it's using is it's a transform.rotation times a quaternion Euler. And a quaternion ruler is used to represent rotations for Unity, as you can see from that little pop-up. And I'm saying that I want my position for my facing to be 0167.57. F stands for float because it's a float value. Anything with a decimal point requires a, a float value, so you have to add that F. And then uh, 0. So XYZ, uh, X0, Y167.57, and Z0. So it's going to face the player. So basically I'm physically saying I'm facing the player the direction that they are supposed to go when they get to that checkpoint. And then what it's going to do finally is it's going to take play dead and it's going to make it false. So that way next time you go through a checkpoint um, and if you crash again then it can still call this again and make it true and so on and so forth. Now, um, I had done this a uh, couple different ways. As you can see, this is a huge script. It's got a lot of different code, some stuff that's not needed. Uh, the reason for that is because of, of how I have it set up. So in here, the update works great. Um, it's only going to function, though, for when the um, whatever script it's it's on uh, attached to or whatever component it's attached to this being attached to all of the death zones um, so initially I had just this on trigger enter which works great but doesn't if I wanted to do uh, a few extra things with it uh, such as call it from another script so I added this respawn location down here uh, which is actually very very beneficial because in my bike animation which is down here in my bike animation let me see if I got it respawn location right here so what I'm saying is initially how this was set up is like I said before if you run into a tree then what's gonna happen is you were going to just automatically respawn right where you were supposed to, right where, you, right, right where you landed. That's not ideal for what we wanted. So I modified this and I said, well, instead, day Z, which stands for death zone, and as you can see here, it says death zone DZ, um, DZ dot respawn location. So it's calling that function from here after you crash. It waits its proper time, does what it's supposed to in the death zone script, and uh, then it places a player wherever they're supposed to actually place. Same, uh, same thing with uh, this check pause here. It's primarily used for getting the proper rotation, but as a, a safe backup, it also is um, making sure that it gets a player at the right actual physical position as opposed to just the rotation. All right, so what was the next thing? So that was the first two things, the spawn and the crash. So now we will go to the bike control script where I start talking about adjusting 
the way the turns are done. And that's in the update right up here. All right, so um, initially how I had this set up um, was, you know, if the acceleration equaled zero, meaning you were uh, normal acceleration up above normal acceleration, then um, all of your values were going to be set the specific way. This is backwards. I reversed it. Okay. If it was at zero, then your values initially were reversed on this. Uh, your values would actually be set the way they originally are set when you start the, the scene. Otherwise, if it's greater than, or if it's less than or equal to negative 0 0.1, then it's these values up here. Like I said, it's backwards right now because I had adjusted uh, how I had done it. Uh, instead, what I did was I changed it. Because the uh, all this stuff is kind of controlled from the... The button I'm using is controlled from the main camera view because of where the script's attached and everything. Uh, I created this saying, you know, game object find main camera dot get component sharp turns, which is a script that I had created here. Uh, then uh, I went to the wrong script. Did I? Where? Yes, I did. Yeah, by control. There we go. Uh, then dot is button pressed. Uh, so you go here. The is button pressed equals false to start. So it's saying that if the button is pressed, meaning it's true, then set these values. Otherwise, if not game object find is button press, meaning if it's false, set these values. So <clears throat> what these values are is first the stiffness here. That is <clears throat> the actual turn when you're when you're turning the bike from left to right. Trying to make a left turn or a right turn. So I adjust that value, made it a bit higher because what it does is it makes it so that you can actually turn quite a bit sharper than you normally would. Then we have here the max turn, which I adjusted as well. Uh, what that's doing is that is just to say what your maximum amount is that you can actually do for that turn. So like you can't just hit left and all of a sudden you're immediately facing 90 degrees to the left. Uh, I had also adjusted with the max steer angle um, because I'm a motorcycle rider myself and I know that the rules on physics and the rules on how motorcycles work is the more you lean, <coughs> the sharper the turn you can do on a motorcycle. That's how physics works and that's how gravity kind of works with it as well because of the, f the, the pressure that you're putting into the tires that go into the asphalt that you're actually turning on and the actual uh, friction or stickiness of the tires to that. Um, so uh, I had initially changed that uh, as well, which made it to where the bike actually did lean significantly more. But unfortunately, it did not actually change anything. It just made it look like you were laying down on your side while trying to do a turn, but not actually doing anything. And then uh, bike settings, slip, brake. Uh, what this is for is, this is like the slide that you would do, like if you kind of fishtail the bike. So um, I changed it to 50 because I was kind of fooling around with it, seeing how it would work. Um, still seeing how it works. So something in, in the works right now. Otherwise, all these values down here are 1, 1 1.5, and 3. So can I move this down? without turning it off. There we go. So we'll go into the scene here and I will actually start from the start menu because that's the way to do it and hopefully you'll hear it and it won't be too loud on my TV going through my headphones. So again start menu hit the start button you immediately have an explosion that goes off and then you start kind of go through the races, that button that I was talking about, it adjusts the values while you're playing, and you know what, 
let me pause it and open this up so I can show you those values changing. So we go to my motorbike here, and we're going to be looking right here mainly at this stiffness value right here. I hope you can see where I'm clicking. I just highlighted it as well. All right. So when I press this button, you see it changed to two. If you look up about one, two, three, four, five, six, six lines up, you'll see max turn. That changes to two from 1.5. And then if you go up to the next set of uh, numbers, about halfway, it says slip brake. It's right here. You'll see that jump from three to 50 when pressed. All right. So go through here. Um, I did add a few things to this to try and give it some more fun um, for the uh, player. I, I kind of went ahead of myself and did a few things that are primarily for next week, but uh, like I added a couple of those explosions that I was talking about. A few things I still need to adjust, like the mine car back there that I just passed that you didn't see. I need to adjust when that actually comes out because right now it doesn't come out at all. So you see that fire? I hope you saw it because it's really cool in my opinion. See that fire going off there which kind of leads you to think, oh shit, what happened right here? You got all that fire going there now and that kind of explains it a bit. You know, it's you now know that, okay, something exploded over there. Now all those carts are on fire. Maybe those carts are what exploded. All right, here's a perfect example of my checkpoint. Now I loaded at a checkpoint rather than right back to where you were initially. And we're going to continue on without wrecking, hopefully. Yeah. I like that that bridge there because it's kind of a tough spot for people. Aww. But hey, I'm at a new checkpoint, so I'm okay. See? Closer to the bridge. So I know my checkpoints are working as well, which is actually very good because the uh, checkpoints are a very important part of this game. You don't want players to get frustrated because, well, they can't get past this one spot and then the one time they get past it, all of a sudden they, they wreck into something else and it puts them all the way back at the beginning. Very, very frustrating for players. So we uh, try to limit that. Ooh, I'm gonna wreck. Oh, I didn't. That's awesome. So we're gonna have another explosion go off over here. That again, these ones are something that I still gotta work on. But it's that one there. Uh, it's got a sound to it. Um, and then uh, I gotta work on those a bit still. That's again the test for next week that I started early, so it's okay. And as we get close to the exit, we see oh. Oh, it must be an exit. Look at that. There's a sign that says Tennessee 99 that way. Let me go that way. You go in, and now you're at your uh, score. You hit continue, and you're at the credits, of which, again, like as you can see, it's kind of slow, so i got to kind of do it over again or make it go a little bit faster. One last thing I will go to is my camera pan here. I call this camera pan because this is going to be where the flyby is done. It's a completely separate scene where I've taken out a lot of stuff. There's no longer a motorbike in here because I don't want the motorbike to be in there when I do this. Unless I set up one that's got no player on it, which there's a possibility I could. I also went in and I started to change a few things. I got rid of some of the bad tracks. I'm still going to go through and work on this some more. So I can take this one and connect it with stuff to you know make it look like it was actually still working good and stuff. So work out pretty well and then uh, we'll go to this sign here real quick so this sign how I set it up come on let's do that there we go so this sign is literally just a cylinder with two sprite objects in front of it so that you know you can go behind it and yeah it'll look like that but players aren't supposed to go behind it it's okay um, but this hopefully gives the player an indication of where they should be going. Uh, kind of help them out and say, hey, you know, am I going the right way? Should I actually go through this dark tunnel here that's got a few lights to it? So hopefully it works out, and I guess we will see with testing. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I look forward to completing more work on this. And 
getting my next video done, which will be a, a week from now on next Sunday, where hopefully I will have, or the plan is to have, all of the really cool, you know, fireballs going off with the explosions um, and everything else that goes along with it. I'll show you that explosion again real quick because I think it looks cool. So I placed it right here because I wanted it to be at a position to where when the player gets to the trigger volume which is right about in this area then you could see it go off right so I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna click on it and if you look in this area here you should see it go off you see that and it just rises up to the surface and then dissipates we'll show that again Boom. It's beautiful. All right. Well, again, hope you enjoyed and uh, have a good week.